On my first visit, regretfully, I did not smell the blooms of the flower. And this was a, a question was asked to me, uh, you know, what does it smell like? And I had to go back and uh, hike up into the mountains again just to get a, a sniff of that bloom. And I tell you what, there was there's no regret. Once you smell that bloom, you'll remember it. It was a really soft but really complex floral bloom, and uh, it's 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 without words. You can't describe the smell of this bloom, but it is beautiful. One of the most uh, detailed descriptions of this particular plant was published in Botanical Gazette, Volume 61, Number 1, January 1916, page 72 through 74. It's published by the University of Chicago Press, and I'm going to provide a link to this in the show notes page. Uh, but I just want to read a, a real quick excerpt out of that. And the author is Edwin Payson, University of Wyoming, Laramie, Wyoming. Payson writes, The fragrance of the flowers is so intense that one would imagine many insects would be attracted. Yet such is not the case. In my observation of this plant during the spring of 1914 in southwestern Colorado, I saw but few insects visiting the flowers except the species of bumblebee mentioned. Occasionally, a fly or a bee would alight on them, but was not capable of neither obtaining nectar nor of dislodging the pollinia. The bumblebees, however, on warm spring days, were actively at work on them. There was no hesitation in their work. They knew where the honey was stored and how to get it. I found pollinia and corpopsula attached to the legs of all bumblebees I caught on Asclepius cryptoceras.